So I wanted to talk about two specific topics that you raised in your testimony, ocean acidification. Uh, the ocean is becoming more acidic as it absorbs excess carbon dioxide from the air, and this change has the potential to, among other things, uh, disrupt aquatic food webs. Uh, and in Oregon, the shellfish industry has already seen the harmful effects. And I want to point out that even for representatives who don't represent coastal communities, their constituents eat shellfish, and restaurants need it, and uh, it's, it's an important industry. Uh, the fishermen really dread what they might learn about damage to the food chain from ocean acidification. Uh, the budget request proposes an increase of $8.9 million for the ocean acidification program. So can you please discuss the need uh, for that program and especially how NOAA is translating its research into practices and strategies that benefit the industry? Thank you for that question. This is really the, one of the silent, you know, creeping hazards uh, of our changing planet. Uh, NOAA seeks to better understand the processes and causes behind ocean acidification and, in particular, as you point out, to develop methods that can translate our understanding and our monitoring of the natural environment into this thing I keep calling environmental intelligence, actionable and action-oriented, timely information that, as you know from your state, enables your constituents to manage the water intakes right. to their shellfish farm and protect their brood stock. So that is very much one of our key focal points in coastal resiliency generally. On the northwest coast, acidification is one of the principal risks. The Great Lakes in the Gulf of Mexico, harmful algal blooms uh, are also of concern. So how do we help coastal communities? How do we help provide them the information that beach managers, fishing managers, shell food proce shellfish processors can actually apply to keep their, their communities, their businesses, their families safe? Thank you. And, and also I wanted to talk about the Tsunami Warning and Education Act, which uh, we will likely be considering, and I am glad we are going to take that up. For uh, constituents up and down the coasts who grew up memorizing tsunami evacuation routes, this can't come soon enough. Uh, in that regard, I was concerned to see that the President's budget includes a reduction to education and awareness program grants under the National Tsunami Hazard Mitigation Program. Uh, how does NOAA intend to ensure uh, regional decision makers are able to develop and execute effective tsunami response plans without that grant program in place? Uh, well, first of all, let me thank you for your support for the reauthorization of the Tsunami Warning Education Act. That is a valuable piece of legislation that we do appreciate. Uh, with respect to the FY15 budget, uh, I also want to assure you that this in no way affects our principal responsibility, which is to provide those warnings and alerts that enable communities to take prompt action and get out of harm's way in the case of a tsunami. It does not affect the operability and the maintenance of the DART buoys, the key monitoring systems on the seafloor that feed that. It does not affect our uh, monitoring in collaboration with the U.S. Geological Survey that connects us to their seismic monitoring. It does not affect the, uh, the ongoing relationships and education uh, and connections between our National Weather Service folks and, and communities along the coast. Uh, regrettably, in the tight fiscal climate we are in, where we, we cannot, we don't have the means to advance all of the things we would wish to advance, we had slowed, we proposed in this budget to slow down to curtail the added grants that could expand the education footprint. Uh, but we are not curtailing the Tsunami Ready Community Program that exists with existing communities. So our core responsibilities are unchanged. Uh, the rate of, some rate of progress is slowed down. Thank you. And I look forward to having that conversation when we take up that legislation. And, and on a related note, uh, I, I often discuss the importance of NOAA's research and outreach activities in, in the community. Uh, you know, our constituents understand that NOAA is doing its best with limited resources, but as you explained, uh, there is unmet need. But as you also acknowledge, uh, there are uh, fiscal challenges. So I was pleased to see the budget request propose the 3 percent increase, but I was also dismayed that the House Appropriations Committee is proposing a 1 percent cut to the budget. So considering the unmet need for your agency's work, can you give the committee a brief idea of what a 1 percent funding cut compared to a 3 percent increase might mean for the work that you do and for our constituents? Oh, it would take me more time than, than we have left to enumerate all the different service needs, drought information, water planning information, um, El Nino, uh, refining the El Nino forecast so we can do a better job of helping California and the Western States know in advance if the drought will break, when the pattern might shift, um, and bringing our high performance computing up to par and keeping on the pace that we are currently on, which will put us back on par with the Europeans and anybody else and remove the, the bulk of whatever I suspect has underlies the ranking that you have in that article. 
whether climate, understanding the ocean, uh, keeping pace and understanding fish stocks so that our coastal fishing communities have vital economies, all across that front, there already are unmet needs. Thank you. And I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, because the Chair went just a little bit over, just, a, just ask, will you please focus on the importance of climate research to the work that you do? I would be delighted to focus on that. Uh, you know, NOAA's, NOAA exists to understand this planet and how it works and turn that information into useful, actionable information. Uh, that really requires us to understand across all of the timescales that the planet naturally has. So in NOAA, you know, weather is phenomena in the ocean and the atmosphere up to about two weeks in length, and climate is simply those same phenomena over longer timescales. So our ability, for example, to help those water managers that I was referring to in California or ranchers in the southwest, help them know what is what's their outlook for the next season for drought, that comes from understanding how the tropical Pacific climate system works on seasonal scales, that thing called El Nino or scientifically the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Uh, being able to give the six-day outlooks that we gave to the, the south central states in this most recent set of severe storms doesn't come from focusing harder on weather. It comes from having focused more richly on oceans and, and coupling that understanding with our understanding of the atmosphere. The range of information needs that American citizens and business have, businesses have is across a huge range of timescales. And if we aspire, as NOAA is chartered to do, to respond to those demands, to those really urgent needs across that whole range of scales, we have to be able to investigate and study and understand the many different timescales that are natural to this planet. To use a metaphor, we have to be able to play the whole keyboard if we are going to play the symphony that our communities are really asking us to play. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the response.